atmosphere is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere. Atmosphere is changing now. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is overflow.
this morning part of my world take this life and breathe on this heart that is now yours you can have it all and every part of my Take this life and breathe on this heart that is now yours. Sing it out again, you can have it all. You can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world. Take this life and breathe
trust in Him, the ways in which
when we give our hearts to anything, when we give our hearts to anything, we believe. And sometimes I think we hesitate to give our hearts because so many times our hearts have been broken. But when God speaks what is true, when he speaks what is really true, it's so pure. There's, noth there's, there's no hidden agenda with the Lord. There's nothing hidden. He brings everything to the surface. And there's nothing he doesn't know. There's nothing that he can't handle. When he speaks what is true, it is pure, it is holy, it is right. And what he says to us is that you are pure, you are holy, you are righteous because of what Christ has done. So when we give our hearts, when we give our hearts, It's everything. We lay it down. It's everything. It's everything we think about. It's everything we, 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 we experience. It's everything how we handle things. No wonder the apostle Paul, John says, children love one another because that's what the master said. So I want to thank you, God, for, for, for raining down this truth on us, for, for, for bringing us into your, into your family, that we can be family, that we can operate, that we can function, that we can, that we can live and breathe in your truth. So we can continue to sing.
choose you, but I don't understand. I choose to love you when I don't understand. But I don't understand. I just feel like I hear the Father saying, there was nothing wrong with Martha. For her intentions were pure. She just didn't understand. She saw me world weary, tired, worn out, been doing miracles all day, and she just wanted to serve me. But Mary chose the good part. She sat at my feet and she let me serve her. For that's what I came to do. That's what I came to do is to serve you. She had pure intentions. But Mary understood that I came and I am refreshed when I give to you. I know you have burdens and you're weary from prayer requests and things that you just petition the Lord for. That it's good intention. You just, you keep praying for your loved ones. You keep praying for peace for your household. You keep praying for finances to your household so that you can better the kingdom. I know your heart's request. I've heard it and my heart is yearning to give it. But it's not a demand from a distance that you're asking these things from me. For it's the lover's whisper in my ear. It's the lover's whisper and just let me love you. Let me love you. Because out of my love, I will restore all things. That family member you have been crying for, I see him, I see her, I will respond. This is not your battle. 
This is not for you to stay and completely wear your rest out on. Just receive what I have for you. Receive it. And just know it's us. Our marriage bed is undefiled. Just spend time with me. Let me embrace you. And I guarantee you all the rest of the things of the world will be taken care of because I will see to it that it's done because you are my lover. And it is my good pleasure to honor all things in your life. Prayer is just communication with me. Just stay in constant communication with me. Thank you, Father. This morning is a special morning. Edit and prayer just kept seeing honey dripping from the walls, dripping from the ceiling. And body, let me just encourage you. From this day point forward, just tilt your head back and open your mouth. And just receive it. It's good. It's good. Just continually receive. And we have the honor of having a guest who is a dweller of a honeypot. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the honey she dwells in. And Lord, we thank you that you will impart a part of our honey to her as well. Because that's what kingdom's about. So this morning, I'll bypass the uh, offering. We'll hold it off to the end because I like the intimate moment that's going on. I really do. Um... I just probably will have Cynthia introduce our guest. Just, it feels like it's right. <laughs> That's good. I was going to this. Um, I was just going to say that um, too many times we we speak out of our wounds from the past and stuff, you know. And uh, we live there a little too long. And uh, it's a process. It's all a process, getting over all the stuff and working through it and God's perspective and all that and the power of God, actually, to set us free from it. But um, what I'm learning more and more and more is the more you move in the love of God and his presence, which is with you all the time. I've already shared how a couple of weeks ago, here's my little wormhole, I was crying out to the Lord about stuff, you know. And the Lord said, what are you crying out for? I'm right here. I'm right here in the room. I mean, wow, he opened up my eyes, and I just couldn't believe how the presence was so heavy in that room. I just like, on my face. Because... (laughs) It's, it's there all the time. It's just, we're just accessing it. You know, it's just opening up our, up here, you know, the, the lies of the enemy that are telling you, oh, you're so abandoned, you're so screwed up, and you can't do anything right, you're, you know, that stuff. And that's all lies from the enemy. And, but then when you know the truth, it sets you free. And the truth is, he's here. The kingdom of God is here. And so there's some speakers, lots of speakers actually, that have that, that walk in that all the time. And we had the privilege of having Desi in our house again. It's the third time she's been on island, yeah. And um, just partaking of that presence in her life and, and bringing it so tangible, it was just so easy to access. It didn't matter what happened, whether we showed the movie or not, or whether we went out and did street witness. It didn't make any difference because we just wanted to, hey, we just knew what we were supposed to do before the Lord because of the Holy Spirit, just being in all of us. And and it was just an amazing, it's been an amazing weekend. 
It's just been such an amazing weekend. So anyway, I give you the floor, Desi. This is Desi Pardo. <laughs> Thank you. I go to college, so I have books and Bibles and my phone. I'm not texting. My phone's on airplane mode, but I might get on it for notes. Uh, I actually just want to dip back into the honey pot. And um, noisy, but I love it. Um, yeah, I just, um, I just want to make him king again in all of our hearts. Um, whoa, I just invite you into my communion with him right now. You don't have to look at me or you can look at me either way. Just for a second, I'm going to do this. Jesus, you're king. And I'm not going to say things that I don't take responsibility for. Well, you can have the stage. I don't want to propose theology. I want to propose a person. Oh, Holy Ghost, you're real and you're powerful. All anxiety go right now out of the room. All peace. Thank you, God, for your peace. Thank you that the honey that pastor was talking about is you. Let him get on you. Let him get on your mind and your heart. Whoa. He's so humble. He's so humble. Let him challenge you. He's challenging me this morning. I'm challenged. Wow. Let him serve you a fresh meal this morning. Oh, God, I just love you so much. You're king. You're really king of my heart of their hearts, of the world, your king. Oh, anything wrong in our thinking and my thinking, oh, just unwind. I'm inviting you to unwind. Unwind things that aren't of you inside of my thinking right now, God. Oh, your father and you discipline and you discipline well and it feels good. Your sword feels good. When Adam woke up, he didn't feel his wound. He felt duplicated. He was multiplied. Multiply us this morning, God. Multiply us this morning, God. Oh, your love is anesthesia, but it also wakes us up. It wakes us up. Ah, oh, just wake up the things that need to be woke up and put to sleep the things that need to be put to sleep. People struggle, struggle with headaches in the room, and it's not God. All that can go. Yeah, there's an ankle, maybe a left ankle. I'm not, my eyes are closed, but you can raise your hand if you want to. He loves to be acknowledged. When you walk in your husband's house or your parents' house, it's rude not to say hello and give him a kiss. Give God a kiss this morning. He's so real. He's so real. I actually don't like taking platforms or stages. I want him to take the stage of my heart and the stage this morning. But I've so freely given my life to him that I'm confident that he stands here while I stand here. Whoa, I sound passionate and, and angry sometimes, but I'm not. I'm actually so undone with love for him and for you guys. I hope this is okay. I'm just overflowing my heart. I'll get real tangible and practical in a second if you want me to. <laughs> I'm going to stay here and let him love you. 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 
Let him love you. Let him offend, offend you. Let him search you. Search you through and through. He sees you. 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 Let him know you right now, every place. Let him know you. Every place in your heart, let him see you right now. I have authority on my words because he sees me and he knows me. I haven't hidden anything from him. When, I tempt, when I'm tempted, I show him. When I'm insecure, I let him in. When I'm uncomfortable and when I don't know, I let him know. And when I feel confident, I praise him for it and I give him all the glory. He's deserving of that. When I'm offended, I let him offend me. I let him challenge me. When I'm theological, I let him bring me there. When I'm practical, I walk it out well. When I make a mistake, I say I'm sorry. I went to the wrong airport on the way here and I missed my flight, came a day late. And I'm humble and I said sorry, you know? Sometimes we're, we're afraid to say sorry because he's done it all. But man, I love saying sorry to my mom or my dad when I disrespect them. I love saying sorry to my friend when I hurt him. Man, I live out life well, guys. I could feel that you do too. Heaven and earth was created in chapter one of Genesis, not just earth says the first chapter one genesis it says this is how heaven was made the skies i'm going to get it in the wrong order the skies and the earth and all this stuff was made it didn't say that um and then i created the the mystical starry walk through wells whatever else mystical that he that he did create but he described earth. And then in Genesis 2, he said, this is how the heavens and the earth were created. Heaven is here. And heaven looks like something. And I'm staring it in the face. It looks like each of you. It looks like John Crabtree stuck in the honey pot. It looks like Mark hungry for the revelation of the, the cross. It looks like Susan casting out demons. It looks like Michelle running to her boyfriend's house to love the family. It looks like Cynthia hosting the nations. It looks like you that I've never met before, but you're so welcome and into your heart. You're so welcomed to humble yourself because you're hungry for the love that he can only serve? That's heaven. Man, I'm acknowledging his throne right now. And he's here. He's so here. Ah, oh, get rid of my agenda, God. I sign up for yours. I sign up for yours, Father. Sign up for yours. Sign up for yours. I welcome you to welcome me in your heart as a sister right now. I actually don't want to offend God. I actually rather, rather offend myself or other people than him. I really don't want to offend him. I really don't want to offend God. And sometimes we offend God for the sake of not offending people. I don't want to offend him. Man, we're so okay with offending him. And he's such a lover. He's the only one that serves the honey pot. He's the only one that's sticky and ooey and gooey. He's the only one. He's the only one that's consistently kind. He's the only one that drives out demons and sets you free. He's the only one that heals the sick and keeps them healed. He's the only one that raises the dead and gives them real life again. He's the only one and I won't offend him. I love him way too much. I love him every day of my life. And I don't understand 
And when I don't understand, I'll love him. I'll love him again and again and again. And it's a joy, the joy of my heart, the joy of my heart to love him. Man, I'm so happy about loving him. Man, I love loving him. I love loving his feet. I love loving his face. I actually feel so satisfied by him. I feel satisfied from any cravings of the world. I've been so hungry ever since I got invited and Cynthia and I planned the trip. I've just been, I've been so hungry. I've been so hungry. I'm like, God, what's your word? What's your words for Mary? You know, that like a, like we think we know. Um, and I just got so hungry for him. And um, I'm not like a, I'm not a typical faster or sacrificer because I know that he did it all and I live in the crucifixion and, and the, in the resurrection of his life. I actually don't believe that we have to do anything. But because the joy of my heart, I do everything for him. I do everything for him. I do everything for him. But I do a lot of nothing, too. And I fasted. I started fasting. I got so hungry, so hungry for him. I I don't know the theological principles of fasting. You guys can fill me in later. Send me an email, and I really want to know. I'm actually so serious. I'm so humbled to know why why to fast or why not to fast. I'm so welcome to be challenged in that area. But I just, I was like, man, I was like, man, I just, I just, I just love you, God. And I just, I'm so hungry for you. I'm so, I'm so hungry for the greater things. I'm so hungry for the ooey gooey presence leaking on my classmates without doing anything. Bill Johnson walked into a, I don't want to name drop, but walked into a grocery store. People were just falling on the floor. There's other people that walk into, I'm actually a psychic, walked into my prophetic booth. And just started throwing up and manifesting a demon. I never prayed, never anything. It's the presence. It's not me. It's really the presence. And it's me becoming aware that he's here, acknowledging him. Um, And I just started fasting. Just started fasting like 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 a mad woman. Fasting like I had an eating disorder. I was like, I just want to like, I just want you, God. There's nothing else. I was actually so satisfied by him. I was so satisfied by him, you know? I'm so satisfied. At a point, and I lost my point. It'll come back. Um, oh, I was praying for, the, for, for Maui, and I got this word, fasting, and, uh, or hunger, just this deep, deep hunger for him because I love him, guys. And I just felt this morning that... Um, that Maui is, that the Hawaiian Islands are about family and about relationship. And I keep hearing this like over and over again, that we're about relationship evangelism. We're about relationship. We're about organic, organic and relationship. And um, man, that's what he's about. That's what he's about. He's about connection, you know. Ah. Oh. But what do you do when you connect with your husband and your wife? What happens when you get in the bedroom a few times? What comes out of it? A seed. What happens to a seed? It blooms. It bursts. Something comes out of connection. There's no pressure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Honeymoon never goes away with God. You get in the bedroom. You get connected, and a seed comes out of it. And that seed's planted inside, inside of you. And that seed bursts something. And if you're not birthing anything, then you're not connecting. And you're not organic. And I'm not organic. And I'm not putting a formula on it. There's no formula. It doesn't look like me or Todd White or John Crowder or Easton Turbin Torben or um, John Crabtree or Pastor Mark or Cynthia Hudson 
It looks like you getting in your bedroom with your king and letting him plant a seed in you and birthing something. And I truly have no agenda. It's just the, it's the realness and the rawness of what happens with God. And something happened to John Crabtree, and he got in the bedroom with God, and he got addicted to that honey pot. And he's birthing the presence wherever he goes. And it's good. You can stay in your honey pot, John Crabtree. Yes. It's all about the presence, but the presence produces, it bursts, it creates. From the beginning of the time, presence was creating. I hope you're following me. I love him so much, I produce things all over my life and in my life. Yeah. Um, I just want to check my notes really fast. Um, yeah, I wanted to say that it's a privilege to be here. Yes, I had to write that in my notes. I get kind of lo lost, lost in heaven and love. But it is, it's a privilege to be here and it's an honor and I don't take it lightly. I hope you guys don't take it lightly either. I remember when I, my mom, and the first time I went to Maui, my mom's like, we're going on a family vacation for five days to Maui. And I was like, book my tick for, ticket for a month after. She's like, what? Why? I was like, I don't know. I want to stay a month extra. It's just, it, Maui has just been in my heart. When I got saved, I thought I was going to be laying down my life in Africa for the orphans and doing Heidi Baker. And um, I get sent to Maui in Australia and Switzerland. I don't know why, he just put it inside of me. I stayed for a month. I was newly Holy Spirit baptized and praise God for Dennis and Cynthia for, for housing me for a month. And um, yeah, let me see. Wow. Yeah, I want to know if you know him. I want to know if you're, I want to know if you know him, and I want to know the places that you don't know him in, and I want you to know the places that you don't know him in. Because I know him really well, and I know places that I don't know him in. And I'm so humble, and it's just what I'm carrying. So what I'm carrying, I just know the son of the living God, and I know God. But I also know the places that I don't know him in, and I know the places that he, he that I have um, hidden, or I, I, I have been insecure to walk in, like learning to cast out demons. It's just kind of happened in my life. It just kind of happened. I've never had a turmoil over it. I've never had a... I've never, never, never once. But I'm humble and I'm learning and I'm so willing. Are you willing? Are you willing to love him back? When you get so loved by your husband, you can't help but love him back. There's no pressure. There's just a pleasure to love him back. You know, I asked, do you know what Jesus' favorite color is? Do you know what your wife's favorite color is? Do you know if Jesus ever fell out in the spirit? Do you know if he wears sandals or shoes? Do you know if he gets haircuts? Did he ever get a haircut? Yes, he did. He had long hair, and then when he came back, he had short hair. 
So an angel cut his hair. He went to heaven and got a haircut. Um, you know, guys, like, Sometimes we make him an idea instead of a person. And so we're uncomfortable with him when we're uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable with him in public. We're uncomfortable with him in our marriage, in our sex lives, with our parents, with our brothers and sisters. Because we're not comfortable with him. Because we don't know him. You know? The more you know someone, the more you're comfortable. John and Crystal, you guys are so comfortable around each other because you know each other so well. But, you know, I'm still getting to know you guys. So if we're out in public, we're still uncomfortable in places. And it's okay. But don't you want to know him? Don't you want to stay in that place of connection with him and know him? You know? Someone asks me what my best friend's favorite color is. I have an answer for you. He told me blue and green. I don't know what he's going to tell you. But that's what he told me. You know, I, I, I'm so practical right now, but it's so real. This is my life with him. Sometimes I feel, oh, Lord, how raw should I get? Uh, uh, sometimes I feel these, sometimes I feel these things <laughs> and I invite him into it. You know, sometimes I feel, um, sometimes I'm in class and I'm in a liberal school and they're talking about, how Christianity has ruined the whole world, you know? And I'm like, God, what do you think about that? Because it makes sense to me, you know? <laughs> we came in and we slaughtered everywhere, everyone. Makes sense to me, <laughs> you know? What do you think about that, God? Or am I just going to, no, no, Christianity is a savior of the world. He did everything, He'd, you know? He's a, da, 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 da. It's like, actually, let's just be humble and get answers. Let's be humble and connect. That's what the honeypot is. It's not this vacation. He's not only a vacation, you know? He's not only a vacation. He gets intimate in your life, and he wants to take responsibility so you don't have to. He wants to cast out the demons so you don't have to. He wants to heal the sick so you don't have to. If I have to, it feels gross. He wants to preach the gospel. You know when people come in here, I hope this isn't how you feel after me, but, and they preach the gospel, and then you leave, and you're like, oh, that was so much truth, but I just feel so, like, yucky. I just feel yucky. Because they did it. He didn't do it. You know? Man, stay in the honey pot. Get to know him. What does honey taste like? You know? God, what was your favorite food? Is it not big enough? Is it not going to change the world? Because knowing him changes the world, guys. Go change the world and then meet him. That don't impress me much. I'd rather someone who has no idea what they're saying, no truth, they cannot articulate the truth, but know him. You walk in their presence, and there's something that changes you. And you think, there's Catholic saints, and you're like, everything you're saying is wrong. But you know him. And I can feel it. I can feel him around you. That's the honey pot. That's how you know things about people. That's how Crystal gets these crazy words of knowledge. But only things that Jesus would know is knowing him. You know? Are you following me or are you lost? Raise your hand if you're lost. Some of you are lost, but that's okay. I'm lost, too. <clears throat> I am. All right. Um. Hey, and I love you guys. John Crabtree, I love you. 
I really do. When I was out back there, I was like, man, this is, this is a man who, who's never going to sacrifice the presence. And I, I, could, I, I could just see myself sitting in you in um, Edit's living room, and you're just like, just like, just like, just speaking the Lord over me or nothing. Just We're just all sitting there just getting wacky in the Lord. And I love getting wacky in him. I just want to, I just want to honor you, man. I actually just want to really honor you. I, I really want to honor you, and I, um, and I, uh, yeah, I love Mary. I love Mary so much. I love Martha, too. I do. I love them both. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the... Uh, Pastor, just tell me um, when to cut me off. 11, 38, 12, okay. Uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the realm of heaven's kingdom. It is only those who persist in doing the will of my heavenly Father. Do you guys know what his will is for your lives? Some of you are supposed to just sit in the honey pot for a while. Some of you are supposed to take the honey pot out. Your honey's overflowing. It's getting stuck. It's going to be a volcano. Share the honey. The world wants the honey. Get outside the honey pot. What is he doing in your life? That's his will right now. What is he doing? Ask him what he's doing right now. What are you doing in my heart while Desiree's speaking? What are you doing in the room while Desiree is speaking? I don't need your attention. I want your attention to be on him. It is only those who persist in doing the will of my heavenly Father. On the day of judgment, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, don't you remember us? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons? And do many miracles for the sake of your name. But I have to say to them, go away from me, you lawless rebels. I've never been joined to you. Everyone who hears my teaching and applies it to his life can be compared to a wise man who built his house on an unshakable foundation. When the rain fell and the flood came with fierce winds beating upon the house, it stood firm because of its strong foundation. When the rains fell and the flood came, when there's tension in your marriage, when there's demons roaming in a city that you're ministering in, when there's the sick aren't getting healed, when your children run away from the Lord, when you don't feel loved, when the floods came, with fierce winds beating upon his house. Desiree stood firm because of its strong foundation. It stood firm because of its strong foundation. That's how I read the Bible sometimes. It stood firm because of its strong foundation. In another translation, it said, it stand firm because it was built on a rock. This is the Passion Translation. Do you know what the rock is? It's not theology. It's not an idea. It's a person. But with a person comes theology and ideas. Oh. My point is, is that connection produces something. Connection produces something. Connection produces something. 
What are you producing? I'm not faking it, guys. I have a lot of fruit in my life. I'm not faking it. I see the sick healed every day. Okay, six, six days a week. Six days a week. It's because I love him. And he said heal the sick. If I don't want to do it, well, I don't know I want to do it. There's no pressure. I love him. Why don't I want to say hello when I walk in the house? Why don't I want to show off my wedding ring? You know, when you're married, I just use this analogy. I was talking to Kana the other day, and it came into my mind. I was like, oh, that's so good. When you're married, and you're talking to the opposite sex, and they've been through a, a bad divorce, or any sex, and a bad divorce, you don't hide your wedding ring because it's offensive. But we do that with Jesus. People are offended from Jesus, and we hide him. Why do we do that? Why are you putting a basket over your light? Everybody needs Jesus. He's love. Do you believe that? Do you believe that he's the savior of the world? Man, I believe it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The only thing that frees you from shame is the gospel. And we hide the gospel. Why do we hide it? Because we're uncomfortable with it. We're uncomfortable with it because we don't know it. What is it? It's him. It's Jesus. It's the Holy Ghost. And I love the Holy Ghost. I love you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Holy Ghost. Hmm. Yeah, I, I want to compel you to know him. I want to compel you to know him. Sometimes I have to hold back from holding, talking about my brothers because I love them so much. Do you have to hold back talking about Jesus or do you hold back because you're scared to talk about Jesus? I, I, I'm, I'm so not trying, I'm, I'm so not, uh, I, you know, sometimes like people come, you're like, whoa, no pressure. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure. I'm going to, no pressure. I'm going to be with, I'm going to be a Mary. You know what Mary was? She knew Jesus. She was with him. Are you with him? Because you can be laying down and resting and not be with Jesus. I'm with you guys right now. I'm feeling uncomfort in places where I should be uncomfortable. I'm not holding my heart back. I'm not holding my heart back, you know? Don't hold your heart back. Don't hold your mind back. Let him have those places. Be hungry to know him. Or don't come. I'm so serious. Don't come. Don't come if you don't want to know him. Get out of my father's house if you don't, you're not here from him. Because he's so worthy. 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 He's here and he's now and he's brother and he's friend, but he's king. He's king and he's so worthy. He's so worthy, guys. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Oh. Oh, I was in, I came to Maui, I left Maui, I got into ministry right away, quit my job, or I don't even know if I had a job, started making jewelry, I was a hippie, and I just did ministry everywhere, I started getting support from places, and I um, got into this ministry thing, I got into Mary, and I just started doing ministry, and people's lives were getting changed, and it was amazing, and all this, all this fruit was happening. I was getting invited. Some really big churches and ministries were inviting me to lead their mission trips in some of the darkest places in the world. And we were seeing the sick healed and not the, ra the dead raised yet, but the blind 
I see the, the deaf ears open. We're seeing Jesus manifest. And then something happened about two years into that. And I got really real. And I was like, God, I, I feel uncomfortable outside of ministry. I feel uncomfortable ministering outside of ministry. It got really real, and I laid it all down for about two years. And I sat at his feet, and I cried out. I never stopped praying for people on the streets, but I never shared about it. I never told anybody about it. I hardly shared it with my friends. But I just, I just got to know the king. And then after those two years, something started happening in me. I couldn't hold him back. It was like a flood water. And it was gushing, rushing, and raging war against anything that wasn't him in my life. Any atmosphere that wasn't in my life. And it just started flowing out of me, and I couldn't hold it back. And I was like, God, I don't want to get into ministry. I don't want to get into ministry. Don't want to do ministry. Don't want to do ministry. Don't want to do it. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. I don't like what it does to people. I don't like chasing favor. I don't like chasing a microphone, a platform. I don't like entitlement. I don't like acting like I know when I really don't know. I don't like when people have, I don't like when people have an agenda. <laughs> but it was rushing and raging out of me. And I couldn't hold him back anymore. Is it hard for you to let him rush and rage out of you? Connect. Get in the honey pot. Really get in there, guys. Really get to know him. And let it rush and rage out of you. You know? Get with Cynthia. What do you think about God? Get with Susan. What do you think about God? Get with John. I love John. I love John. Get with Mark. What do you think about God? You know you're allowed to disagree? Do you guys know that? You don't have to come here and agree with everything that Mark's saying. I don't agree with everything he said. I'm actually not dishonoring him. I actually love him. I am not going to stop loving him. I, I don't expect him to agree with everything I say. Oh, it felt so uncomfortable. Oof. Felt so uncomfortable because we feel like we have to, like, like, pretend. Do I have to pretend, Mark? Do you want me to pretend? I knew you didn't. I don't want you to pretend either. Is that uncomfortable for you guys? Because if it is, it's okay. Let's get comfortable with it. Let's get comfortable with who he is. Con, I love you. You're just this, like, your Holy Spirit. You're Holy Spirit in the shock, the movie. But you're like Holy Spirit in real life. <laughs> I love you. You know what I love about you is that you really just want to be in the honey pot. And you don't want to leave the honey pot. But you came... And I, and I know, yeah, I know that you're hungry for the more. I know that you really want to know him. She said, I, this is so, this is so powerful. That was repentance, what she just did. She said, I met you yesterday. Is it okay if I share on the microphone what you said just now? Um, I met you yesterday, and I realized that Jesus is still an idea still, and I want to know him. She repented right there. That's the gospel. Kingdom's happening here. Be really real, guys. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Go get it. Get to know him. Change the world. You're going to change the world a lot faster if you know him. 
If you don't want to heal the sick, if you don't want to cleanse the lepers, if you don't want to raise the dead, if you don't want to heal the blind, get ready. I feel a big dot, dot, dot. Everybody's like, ooh, what is she going to say? She going to say, don't do it? Or is she going to say, do it? Or is she going to say, what is she going to say? Get to know him. Get to know him because he wants to do those things. He wants to do those things. I'm not looking down on any of you. I'm sitting with you. If I, if, if I was taller, then I would kneel down, but then nobody would be able to see me but Mark. Um. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually like, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to not know him. I know what it's like to want to know him so bad. And you try all these different things, listen to all these podcasts, listen to all this worship. You feel him around you. You feel his love. But that's all it is. It's just this, like, he just comes and he just hangs out around you, but you actually don't know his heart. Ooh, there's just like something on you, powerful. What's your name? Silvana, whoa. The Holy Spirit is so attracted to you. Is so attracted to you. I don't like talking it so much about the healing in the hands. Ugh. Healing comes out of the heart. But there's healing in your hands. There's things that you've been fighting for in your heart. That's him. I just call breakthrough to those areas that you've been fighting for. I call fire out of you, fire out of you, fire out of you, fire out of you. You're a mother, but you're a daughter. I call fire out of you. I love you. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. Everyone can receive it. I'm receiving it right now, too. He loves you so much. I just partner with everything that you or have been praying for in your heart for breakthrough. I feel like there's other people in your life you've been specifically been praying for for breakthrough. Just some really heavy stuff. I just say yes to it. Yeah. I just affirm you. I back you. And I quicken the spirit to do what it's supposed to do faster than it was going to do it. When one puts 1,000 to flight, two puts 10,000. What if the whole room, what if we all put something to flight? How many is in here? I don't know. I'm bad at this. 20. What's, what is, you know, do that math. I'm not, I'm not going to do it right now. But if one puts 1,000, two, 10,000, how many do 20 put to flight? Maui would be saved. Maui's not saved. Why? Oh, that felt like so, like, convicting. My city's not saved either. Why? Because we all think it's about something or somebody else. We all think it's about healing the sick. We all think it's about casting out demons. We all think it's about sitting in the honey pot. It's about him. Some of us will sit in the honey pot our whole lives and we'll never acknowledge him. We'll never know him. Because he comes. He never leaves us. If your wife was around you, you would feel that she's around you. But if you never ask her what her favorite color is, you never know her favorite color. Ask him his favorite color. What does he like to eat? There's no pressure. Do you feel pressure? There's no pressure. 
There's no pressure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to get married. I can't wait to get married. Whoa. I can't wait to be challenged. Is anybody married in here who hasn't been challenged? Why are you afraid of being challenged by Jesus? Is that real? There's a scripture that's been rocking my world. And I usually get addresses wrong, so I'm going to I'm going to give you an address and it is <clears throat> Exodus 34, 14. You must worship no other gods, for the Lord, whose very name is Jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. He's so jealous for his relationship with you. He's so jealous that you love him more than you love doing things for him. That's the honeypot. But he's so jealous for you that when you do love him, that you come home to him and you give him a kiss. And when you leave the house, you don't hide your wedding ring. You take him out to dinner. Whoa. What happens when you go out to dinner with Jesus? Have any of you guys been out to dinner with him? You're like, this chick is a wacko. I feel like I'm a wacko. Um, but when you go out to dinner with Jesus, stuff happens. What funeral did Jesus go to where the dead stay dead? You know? He doesn't just take, he doesn't just feed the person in front of him, but he feeds the 5,000. You know? Have you ever fed 5,000? I haven't. Is this real to me, guys? Is this real to me? But we've learned and we've learned and we've learned and we've learned about him. And we know all about him. But we don't know him. You want to feel comfortable doing nothing? And not have to, having to tell everybody about why you do nothing and why you don't have to heal the sick and why you don't have to do anything for Jesus. You tell people that because you don't really know him. You got to convince people that you spend time with them. You don't have to do anything. You absolutely don't. It says, when you don't do anything, there's grace. That's not verbatim, obviously. He really did it all. But I'm going to get there. I said this the other night. It's a bit scandalous, but I'm going to get there. You're all going to get there, and you're going to be naked in front of the Lord. Some of you guys, none of us, none of us, in the name of Jesus, it's going to be really awkward because you're going to be standing in front of him and you're going to realize that you never showed yourself to him. You guys were never naked in front of each other. And some of us are going to get there. And you're, Whoa, this is so comfortable. This is so familiar. You see every place and part of me. And we see all these things that we've reproduced, all these seeds, all these seeds that we've reproduced, all the sick that have been healed, all the demons that have been cast out. The greatest commandment is to love one another. The greatest commandment is to love one another. The greatest commandment is to love one another. greatest commandment is to love one another. By your love for each other, they will know me.
that feels out of place, but it's not. When you know him, you love. I can't honor Mark as pastor if I don't love God. Like, I actually honor what's in your heart. Like, you moved me so much yesterday when you were talking about the cross. You totally moved me. You know? By your love for one another, he'll know. They'll know him. They'll know that, uh, what is it? By your love for one another, they will know that you're my disciples. You know? The reason why I can love you guys, the reason why you guys can love me is because you see the Father in me. The reason why you can love people in the world, you see, you see the way that the Father feels about them. Oh, man, I want to go somewhere else now. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go there, but, you know, and I, I'm just praying for eyes to see, guys. I, I'm praying for your eyes to see, for my eyes to see, for the, for the bride's eyes to see that he wants to know you. And when he knows you, he's, he has thoughts about you that are wonderful and freeing. We can be so real with him. He wants to know you. He wants to know you. He's like, oh, he does know me. But he wants to hear from you. What if Cynthia's like, oh, Dennis knows me. I'm not going to tell him about my day. No, Cynthia's like, this is what happened. When I got home last night, Cynthia and Dennis popped up, and then we ended up talking for a half an hour. They wanted to know me. They wanted to know about my day. That's what Jesus does. Pop! Tell me about your day. How was it? How was it? Oh, you were there. You know how it was. You know all things, Father. Man, he wants to hear it. Tell him. Sit in your car and get all weird and talk to yourself. Talk to him. He's there. He's sitting next to you. You know? I'm getting so practical. This is like the simple gospel. This is my life. This is the only thing I have to give. You know? Also, I just want to say one thing, and this is a challenge. And it doesn't sound like a Mary challenge. It sounds like a Martha challenge. But turn off the podcast and read the Bible. Turn off the worship music. I love podcasts, and I love worship music. Sometimes I call my best friend. I'm like, go, worship, worship, you know. It's communion with each other. It's like nothing else. And one can put 1,000. I feel like I'm downplaying relationship with people right now, and I don't want to do that. I'm just, I'm just really all about him this morning. I don't want to downplay my relationship with people. My relationship with people, I actually have really healthy relationships. Super healthy. My best friend and I were in the world together, living debaucherous lifestyles, and we got radically saved together. And we're the bestest friends in the whole entire world. She's at Bethel Supernatural School of Ministry, second year. And she's absolutely wrecked and changed my world. I've changed her world. We lay down our lives for each other. I have to put my phone on airplane mode because she... Um, She'll just be texting me prophetic words and feeling this, I'm feeling this, word of knowledge for this. I'm like, oh, oh, you're not here. Got to turn you off. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't want to downplay relationship with people. Actually, yeah, out of knowing him comes really healthy relationship, you know. Um, there was one, oh, yeah, reading your Bible. Yeah, guys, I know it sounds religious. It's kind of old-fashioned. But um, it's the only way you get to know him authentically for yourself. You become addicted to one thing. You become addicted to one theology. You become addicted to one way of living. Man, it gets really nasty. We're not called for that. We're called to know him and express him. You can't know him if you have everybody else's voice in your heart, in your head. You know? You get his voice in your heart and your head when you know him. 
when you read the Bible. I mean, if you have a hard time reading the Bible, I would um, download the Passion Translation on an app. This is really practical, but it really helps. Actually, it's called Bible Gateway. It's free. And um, download the Passion Translation or buy it from Bethel. Or the Message is really good, too. Um, I know, I think Cynthia said you guys, some of you guys are really into the mirror. Um, I've never read the mirror. So, um, but I, and then after you get addicted to that, I would go into different translations. And um, if you don't like reading, I listen to the Bible as well. I call my friends up and we just listen to each other. Um, if you don't understand, um, I'd really wait on the Holy Spirit. I'd wait before you ask. I, I would really wait. Um, you don't have to understand everything that goes on in there. You just have to choose him. Read the Psalms. Read John. You know, this is really practical, but we don't do it anymore in charismania. We get so caught up in the spirit. But the spirit is, is, it manifests on earth. Heaven, this is how heaven and earth were created. It's not separate, but we get acknowledge what's not manifest, what doesn't look like heaven. If we don't acknowledge what doesn't look like heaven in our heart, in our lives, in the world around us, then we'll never release heaven. We don't have a need for God if we don't recognize what's not godly. Everything's godly. Everything is not godly. There's a, there's a thing going around, and I actually believe it, but it's being proposed very, very wrong. There's no separation between the sacred and the secular. You're saying that people murdering, and I just noticed there's the children in the room, doing perverted acts, that's sacred, you're wrong. And if you don't acknowledge it, you won't see God in it. Jesus acknowledges it. Paul acknowledges it. Get his heart, guys. You have to know him. We get these theologies, and they rob us of knowing him. Father, I love you, and I love them. I love Pastor. I love Crystal. I love Michelle. I love Sophia. I love Kana. I love Cynthia. Love Susan and Bernie and John. <sighs> I love John Crabtree. Isn't that a good name? He might be famous just because of his name. I love Giandra. Is that how you say it? I love Giandra. I love you guys who haven't met you yet. I actually love Oliver. Man, I love you, Oliver. I love you so much. I love you three right here, and I love you in the back. I love you too. Even if you never change, even if you never, never change, or you hate my message, totally disagree with me. I love you. I really love you. And I actually, send me an email. I actually am humble, and I want to be challenged. I, I really will give you my email, or we can FaceTime, and I want to be challenged. Tell me where I'm wrong. I take full responsibility of my words. But I want to see fruit. I want to see fruit. God, just bless them. Bless Amp Church. Bless Amp Church. Yeah, I just feel like your family, Amp. I came here when I was, uh, the first time I came to Maui, and I've held on to you tight. And I don't feel to let you go. I know a lot of people have let you go. I don't feel to let you go. I feel to wash your feet. I want to wash your feet. I want to give you bread. I want to give you wine. I want to drink your wine. I want to eat your bread. I receive if you want to wash my feet. I love you, Amp Church. I love you, Apostolic Sending. Center. Apostolic means sending. Mark, you will send. You will send. You will send. 
Yeah. God, I thank you that I know you, and I thank you that they know you. I don't want to downplay the places that they know you because I know they know you. I could feel it in the room. I can feel that these people know you. Yeah, I just bless you with a thick, ooey-gooey presence. I bless you with a thick, ooey-gooey presence. I bless you. I bless you with healing. Right now, right now, God, just come. Fill their needs, fill their hearts, free their minds. Just clarity right now. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Pastor Mark. I really honor you. Thank you, Desi. It is a relationship. It's 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 an intimate knowing. Jesus said, Philip, you know that you know me. You know the Father. You know me. Um, thank you, Desi. This has been a wonderful weekend. Christ in You, the, the movie. If you haven't seen it, how, how do they see it? You do. And they're on Amazon. Okay. All right. Thank you, Desi. So we'll have some access to it. Uh, next week, we're having a family meeting after church. So are we doing potluck? Are we doing food? What are we doing? We don't know. Should we have potluck next week? Yeah, let's do it. We'll have potluck. And um, yeah, yeah. So... Thanks, family, for coming out, and uh, we will see. I'm sorry? Absolutely. We always will take money, okay? So <laughs> there's an offering basket in the back, and we have the square ready to take credit card, and um, we really appreciate being able to pay the bills, all right? Nobody gets paid here, but we have been abundantly blessed and you can't know what it's like to be able to hand the landlord the rent every month and not be sweating it, okay? And he provides exactly what we need. So we thank the Lord for that. Thank you guys for just responding to the Holy Spirit. You know, he tells you, hey, I want you to give this, whatever that is, okay? Thank you so much, family. We will see you next week.